everyone, welcome back to Brombird News. Well, it's been snowing on and off all day. We had to bring our planters into the greenhouse and we're shooting inside. Ooh, it's so cold outside. Anyway, Tom Parker from Pennsylvania reminded me of something that I used to do years ago, but then somehow I stopped. So if you feed hummingbirds and your hummingbird feeder doesn't have an ant mode, either inbuilt or suspended, above the feeder and if you see ants crawling into your hummingbird feeder you can actually stop them by suspending your hummingbird feeder off a fishing line ants absolutely do not like crawling on fishing lines so they will leave your hummingbird feeders alone and if you feed fruits to your birds i do all summer long like you know apples and oranges and if ants are bothering your fruit you can actually suspend the fruit you know kind of pierce them through and hang them off the fishing line or if you have one of those orange feeders for baltimore orioles you can suspend the feeder off the fishing line and the ants will not crawl all over your fruit so try it out i hope it works for you You know, it's funny that you should pose this question to me at this point in time, if only because lately I've been asking myself the very same thing about my own diet. It seems that every evening before I go to bed, I find it necessary to eat a peanut butter sandwich. Well, if your question is not about me, it's for the birds. Just about every bird feeding expert will tell you that peanut butter is not only a favorite food among backyard birds, but also a healthy treat because it contains a lot of vital nutrients. But many of these same experts will also tell you that it's rich in fat, which may not be good for the birds. They'll also tell you that offering the usual popular name brand peanut butter is not wise because they contain added oils, sugar, salt, and other artificial flavors and preservatives. In other words, only offer the natural peanut butter with no additives. The thing is, I'm not aware of any published scientific studies that support any or all of this advice nor do I know of any that conclude that birds can ingest too much peanut butter. That doesn't mean it's not true, we just don't know for sure. But I suppose that it's always better to err on the side of caution for now and use only natural peanut butter or some other natural nut butter and only offer it in moderation as a treat now and then, say no more than a couple of times weekly. And keep in mind that peanut butter can become moldy if left out too long and I know for sure that that is not good for the birds. We are continuing to experiment with making natural fertilizers for our gardens. In the past, we tried composting our household food waste mixed in with dead leaves, but because of raccoons, we never really succeeded. So this year, we thought we would concentrate on things that raccoons are not really interested in. That would be just dead leaves, of which we have plenty. We normally just throw them onto our brush piles and never see them. This year, we decided to be a little bit more organized. So it is recommended to start with a pile of sort of three feet tall and then make layers of dead leaves and fresh things like, you know, fresh grass cuttings or fresh leaves and then add a little bit of water. You can keep uh, the whole thing in a compost bin or you don't have to. The black bin just helps keep the heat in and speeds up the process a little bit more. When it comes to hummingbirds in the backyard, my wife and I are quite fortunate. In our home in southern Vancouver Island, we're blessed with many Annas and Rufus hummingbirds flitting about our front and backyards and visiting our feeders. And while wintering in Baja, Mexico, we host several Costas hummingbirds in our yard there. The temperatures of our northern Canadian home will likely not become hot and sweltering anytime soon, but certainly elsewhere in North America and Mexico, this will be the case. Should we be concerned about our wee friends? Well, keep in mind that hummingbirds are well adapted to warm weather. Despite generating a lot of body heat while beating their wings around 80 times a second on average, they're smart enough to rest in the shade in really hot weather. They also have very low feather density around their eyes, their legs, and the bases of their wings to help dissipate heat. And like most birds, their complex respiratory systems with lungs and air sacs also aid in getting rid of body heat. Nevertheless, here are some tips to help keep your local hummingbirds from dying of heat prostration. First, Try to maximize the shade in your yard and visit the internet to find out which hummingbird plants best grow in shade in your zone. 
Second, sugar water spoils much faster in hot weather. Besides hanging your feeders in shady areas, make sure you change your fluid and wash your feeders at least three or four times a week, maybe even daily in exceptionally sweltering weather. While well, I have seen Hummers in Baja actually alight on a bath and drink and bathe, they really go nuts over a hose emitting a fine misty spray. And use a timer so that you don't waste precious water and you allow the hummingbirds to adjust their busy schedules. To me, there's nothing more enjoyable than watching a bird take a bath. Besides a beautiful lake, we also have a brook called Colebrook that runs through our town and it's very popular with birds. This is where I do a lot of bird watching. Belted kingfishers are back and I see or hear them almost every day when I take out the dog for a walk. So if you are anywhere close to a body of water and you hear this, you have belted kingfishers. I managed to film this female because I recognize her call before actually seeing her. Apparently, if there is open water and plenty of food, belted kingfishers will spend the winters even in our area and some northern states, but I only see them here in the spring and summer. We're all used to males having brighter colors or brighter plumage, but with belted kingfishers, it's the opposite. It's the females that have that rufous patch on their belly and the males don't. Their diet is anything they can catch in clear water and close to the surface. It's absolutely fascinating to see how fast they go to catch that fish. They are solitary birds except during their breeding season. Males establish their territory and then attract a female and then together they fight off any competition or any intruders to their area. Kingfishes love to nest in riverbanks or any kind of vertical surfaces close to a body of water, though they have been spotted in gravel pits as well. What they do is they don't actually build a nest like a lot of other birds, but they burrow through that uh, bank, they make a rather long tunnel and they make a large cavity and that's where the nest is. They don't actually line the nest, it's just left like that. They only have one clutch per season and the usual four to five eggs. Well, that's it, that's all for now. Enjoy this beautiful time of the year. My favorite bird, the gray catbird is here. They've actually been going to my bird feeders and of course, rose-breasted grosbeaks are here as well. Take care everyone, I'll catch you in two weeks.